All right, so this problem is problem 1.79. And in this problem, they give us the scalar product. And they say the scalar product is equal to negative 6.00. Well, the scalar product, what that means is it's just talking about the dot product. So that just gives us a scalar, a number. And it gives us the um, vector product, which is the, the cross product, is equal to point nine. 9.00. So we have a positive there. And they want us to find the angle. If we draw this out, we have, um, say, vector A and vector B. They want us to find the angle between them. If that makes sense. So if we look at this, we can actually use the formulas for the dot and cross product to give us this angle because we know that a dot b is the same as getting a little ahead of myself um, grab my eraser it's the same as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of theta. We also know that A cross B is the same as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine, sine of theta. That's our cross product right there. We can use these formulas to actually solve for the angle. And the way that we do that is that we need to eliminate A and B, these uh, magnitudes here, from the equation so that we end up just with these known values because we know the value of A dot B, we know the value of A cross B, and we can use these equations to, to solve that here. Because if we look at it this way, we can actually get we go ahead and solve that. For instance, if I solve the dot product first for a, the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, what I actually get is, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this here. It would really be a dot b. I'll do it in steps. It'll be a little easier to see that way equals a dot b over cosine of theta. Now if you look, all I did is I divided by cosine of theta, and that leaves the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b on its own. Now, that's nice because we get this equation that the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b is the same as negative 6.00 over cosine of theta. Now, why that's useful is we can actually use several different ways to solve this as a system of equations. Um, so one thing that we can do, because we could substitute that back in, but I'm actually going to solve it a different way, that I'm going to take this equation here, we know that if I solve this for the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, what we get is that A cross B over sine of theta is equal to that. Now what's nice about that, the way that I'm going to solve this is I'm going to set these two equations equal because they're both equal to the magnitude of A times B. Really, it's good to know as well. This is positive 9.00 over sine theta. So I can just set these two right here equal because they're both equal to that. So 
what I get, negative 6.00 over cosine of theta equals the positive 9.00 over sine of theta. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by sine so that it goes away there, so that it will cancel out. What you get is sine of theta times negative 6.00 over cosine of theta equals 9.00. Now, if you know your uh, angle identities, this is actually the same thing as tangent theta. So that's very nice. And we can divide both sides by uh, negative 6.00 so that we get, I'm going to move over here, tangent theta equals, well, I guess we don't need the parentheses in there, positive 9.00 over negative 6.00. And this, you can take, obviously solve a lot easier, we can take the inverse tangent and we get theta is equal to the inverse tangent of this right here. Now what actually happened when I plugged this into my calculator, I got a different answer than the book. What I got, and maybe some of you will get this as well, is that theta is equal to I think it was about negative 56.31 degrees. And the answer that the book gives is 124 degrees. Now what's interesting about this is if you look at tangent, you know, we know that tangent is a periodic function, meaning that in order for tangent to be equal to this value, it's going to hit it multiple times. And tangent has a period of um, 180 degrees, which means that every 180 degrees, it's going to hit that value. So if you actually take this right here, and you add 180 degrees to it, you're going to get about 124 degrees, which is the correct answer. So looking at it, that's another solution to this, even though it wasn't the value that the calculator gave me, and it may or may not be what the calculator gave you. Um, I was trying to think a little bit of why that might be, that this would be the correct answer over the first value that the calculator spat out. And thinking about it, I think it has to do with, if we look at our cross product here, this has a positive magnitude, because we know that it's a vector, right? So if we look at it this way, it's almost like it would be shooting out of the board this way, supposing this is the positive direction. So if you take the right-hand rule, that means that the angle theta would also need to be positive, moving from A to B. So I think that may be the reason why we get this as the correct answer over the negative angle here. So this would be the positive one, the next positive value. So, there it is.